Bayanlar baylar bugün İrlanda savanalarından bir dostumuz bizimle beraber David. Hoş geldin David. Hoş bulduk. <gülüyor> <gülüyor> so here we are in Istanbul in Omar's Paradise Garden. <gülüyor> yes. And uh, we didn't. <gülüyor> talked about what we're gonna talk about so yeah he's gonna have to talk about some stuff that comes on your mind first uh, like <coughs> uh, how is life traveling being in different different places different all the time places. So far away from home, you might say where is home, but yeah, well, like home, home, <laughs> quote unquote, I guess is Ireland because that's where I'm born and that's where I live most of my life. But it's also where I've been the most unhappy, I would say. Like if you're to take the times I spent living in other places or like being in other places I've been infinitely uh, maybe not infinitely but I've been a lot more happy in these places like the first time I really experienced like life and joy was when I went to Boston for a summer so it, was that the first time you went abroad yeah like that was the first time that I'd been away from my parents for like more than I guess like a week Like maybe I'd been on like a holiday or something, but I'd never really gone out on my own and like paid rent and had a job and my parents didn't know what I was doing. So I could, you know, be, I could make decisions and not really have their judgment like present in my physical reality. Mm -hmm. That That's a, you know, liberating thing. Yeah. How long have you stayed in Boston? For three months. For three months. Yeah, it's just like a summer in between college. And then I went back and it was just super miserable. Like, hated it and just wanted to leave Ireland again. And then I went away somewhere else to Canada for a summer, which is again amazing, really liberating experience. Like, I just did street performing the whole time and then. Street performing? You mean the basking? Basking, yeah. Uh, Singing, playing songs on the guitar, and that's what I did. Like, I wonder time. how much do you did you make uh, per day in Canada playing? Well, I think if you're a singer songwriter like me, uh, there's a lot of other singer songwriters, so it's like not as novel. So people are used to seeing singer songwriters. So I think like. <coughs> In my experience, Sorry. anyway. <laughs> in my experience, anyway, I made like a lot less than some of the other artists would have been making, like playing like cool like electric guitar stuff. But the most I made in like an hour was sixty dollars. But then you can play for like five hours and make like five dollars. So it's not like I love to ask that question too. Like, oh, how much do you make as a street performer? But like, you, there's no answer for it really. Because uh, you can no, you don't know what exactly. Gonna, yeah. Sometimes, um, sokak müziği bazen bir saatte 300 lira kazanıyorsun, bazen 3 saatte 5 lira geliyorsun. Nice, nice, Because we had that experience with Omar too, like you know, five years ago, we were performing in the streets, <laughs> and some nights it, we will make 300 liras for like like in an hour. Mm. David'e sorar mısın mesela bu kadar zamandır işte geziyor ediyor falan ee, dünyadaki 
insan arketipleri nasıllar? Yani e, şimdi yaşadığımız dünya hep bir şikayet içindeyiz ve e, hep bütün senaryolarda hep daha kötüye gidecek gibi ama baktığımız zaman mesela çok güzel bir arkadaşlık ve karşımıza çıkan insanlar hep güzel insanlar oluyorlar. Tabii kötü insanlar da var ama hani genel olarak nerede bu kırılma yaşanıyor? He says you've been traveling for so long. He basically says what you think about the human archetype around the world because you see we have this vision most of us have this vision and it's pretty dark vision about the future mm. future of the mankind and the planet uh, but when we look at it we see lots of great people to you know uh, everywhere uh, what do you think about those i think it's a matter of choosing your own reality and what you focus on because mm. there is so many bad things and there are so many great things Yeah. And the tendency right now in the collective, I feel, is to focus on the bad things. Like if you think about your parents or your grandparents or whoever, like teachers in school, whoever was like your primary caregivers, they're always, in most cases, like not all cases, but for me anyway, in most cases, focusing on the challenges and the lack. So like, for example, if like right now i'm i'm moving toward having my own place and like settling down and stopping traveling and with that you you know you pick a place that you're going to go to so like i'm going to go to this place and then if you share that with people they'd say oh i hear it's very expensive there it's hard to find a job there's no <laughs> houses and that's all like i understand like where people are coming from but like that doesn't actually help in my journey to to finding these things because like every time I've gone away in the past it's been the same deal like in Boston there's no jobs it's really expensive yeah there's no accommodation Vancouver like they say it's like the worst housing market yeah. in the world most of the time that's the first thing you encounter right that's yeah uh, it's like this resistance it's like well, what are you doing like stay where you are it's safe <laughs> like don't go into uncertainty But it's in the uncertainty that you find like the magic and the best things and you open yourself up to like possibilities that you're just not open to if you're staying in the same place, doing the same thing in the same way all the time. So yeah, it's just a matter of like choosing like, like yeah, you acknowledge the fact that maybe there is a tough job market or whatever, or there's a tough housing situation, but If that if you're focusing on how difficult it is, that's what you're going to experience. You're going to experience difficulties, but there's always little like nooks and crannies that you can find your way into if you're open to it. Right. And it's like you you you're not going to get very much support yeah. for that. But you know, you kind of you have yourself for a start, but then also there's people like you guys for example who you know share this uh common sort of mindset yes. and when you're really like tr- like tap in more into your like inner knowing and like like having more trust for like what might happen in the uncertainty then you're you're more like you're gonna find more kind of weirdos <laughs> you know you have to be open to experience open exactly to Like that's the individual yeah. thing to do. Like that's the individual perspective. But yani bireysel olarak şeyden bahsetti. Ee, belirsizliğe açık olursan, devam edersen yeah. insanlar hep şey yapar. Ne yapıyorsun? Yerinde dur, bir iş bul, <gülüyor> yerleş falan der. Ama sen belirsizliğe açık olursan <gülüyor> gittiğim yerlerde ben de gittiğim bütün yerlerde çok güzel şeyler yaşadım ve <gülüyor> çok güzel geçti bütün insanlar bana sakın yapma demesine rağmen. <gülüyor> Ama sen daha çok insanlığın gezegeni şey için sormuştun değil mi? Yani genel olarak falan. mesela hani sonuçta teknik olarak hani insan tarihine baktığımız zaman gerçekten e, böyle şiddetin, kanın e, ve kötü giden bir şematik bir şey var, durum var. 
Ama hani hep güzellikler de var bununla beraber. Ee, mesela bir batı toplumunun içinde doğdu büyüdü mesela. Bu, bu da onun için mesela biz daha şeyiz ya hani böyle arada kalmış bir toplumuz. Hani e, doğuyla beslenen ama bir yandan da batı gibi görünen bir toplum. Ve e, bu mesela bu anlamda kritik onun söyleyecekleri aslında yani bir batı toplumunda e, şey yapıp mesela bir zamanlar sanki e, belki de bu hani bize böyle geçmiş böyle geldiği düşüncesinden dolayı bir büyü vardı ve bu büyü işte parayla ya da işte siyasetle bir şeylerde falan bozuldu gibi geliyor ve hani şu an bunun en temel şeylerinden biri de hani batının e, dünyanın üzerindeki bir hegemonyası, bir egemenliği hani artık Çünkü o krallıklar de... şeyler bitti artık paranın e, e, gücün devri başladı Hı. ve burada da mesela batı çok önemli bir şey hani e, He's saying that uh, you talked about the individual experience, in, uh, but when you look at the history, human history, uh, it's a bloodbath. But uh, still, uh, there there are always some you know great minds, great people who hmm. you know act doing some great stuff. Uh, and in this point, he says the Western mind. And the Eastern mind is wants to talk about it because you're from uh, Western, you are Westernian, mm-hmm. and we're like in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. You know, we we are uh, feeding from the Eastern, but we look like Westerns. You know, we yeah, yeah. our lives look like Westerners, mm-hmm. but there is so much Eastern thing uh, within us already. Yeah, so much Eastern uh, influence. Yeah, what do you think about those concepts? I, As a Westerner, yeah, like the things that stand out for me is like here. There's it's a lot more apparent, like the religious influence, like of Islam, like with all, like the mosque and the call to prayer mm-hmm. happening all the time. Like four o'clock in the morning is like right there <laughs> at your window. That's crazy. It like is. in the West, you're not allowed to have noise in the cities. Like I. I I read a thing, uh, an article in Canada during the whole Corona situation. Mm-hmm. They they allowed the mosque to do the call to prayer in in one of the provinces. I can't remember which. Uh, but you normally they don't. They're not allowed to do the call to prayer because it violates city noise limits. Mm-hmm. So like, there's so much. It's so strict in the West about. Uh, I guess it's sort of like bureaucratic stuff and. Then over here, things like um, there's so many like blind eyes turned towards so many things. But then like the religion is still like a lot of people aren't practicing, but the sort of frameworks and like the the structures that have always been in place historically. Yeah, you can call hear the call to prayer five times in a day. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and it's very loud. It's, it's yeah, so loud. like it's still there, as if everyone is like wants to hear this. But like, m- I would say, like we talked about it yesterday, maybe like only thirty percent of the people here, for example, in Istanbul, are actually practicing yeah. Muslims, and then the other seventy percent are like it's a very multicultural city. So like, a lot of people are coming from other parts of the world where. Yeah, but, Islam, but that it? statistic might not be true. Really. Yeah, that's just something we kind of made up. Made but, up, yeah. but th- it's still the the merit of that statement is that there's a lot of people that aren't practicing Muslims, yeah. and yeah. this is still being broadcast all of the time. So it's kind of interesting that that's still going, and then like other um, sort of conservative aspects of the culture like around like women and like how you dress and like public nudity for example mm-hmm. is totally like the people will call the police on you it's not even the police see you and then give out to you it's like people the will call the people will, like people will call the police on you because you're naked like even if you're you're in a private place yeah. you know but i think nudity is pretty much uh, overrated in so, uh, actually in western 
countries too because w <coughs> think about it when a western uh, politician uh, has some photos leaked mm. on the internet yeah, naked yeah. photos yeah, they yeah. will quit and stuff but, yeah uh, uh, i think yeah, the westerners still yeah they are not over it to no to definitely to not definitely not but i suppose the difference is like there are designated areas in the west like nudist beaches or like yeah, but there are none these, of them here yeah as, as, i mean to the best of my knowledge there's not like no, even like i think like kavak where we were if anywhere would be yeah. a nudist beach yeah, but yeah it's it's not you know yeah people get naked but it's not a nudist beach. yeah you get <laughs> yeah you get naked but like it's risky business yeah. <laughs> yeah. and and speaking about the Western, you know, Omar also said that there's something about the money, the capital uh, that Western mind brought to the world and yeah. it is so widespread in yeah. all over the world. Uh, what do you think about that? Uh, yeah, I think that's the most like difficult thing to observe here is like how pretty much you have like the Western prices, but then like literally like the paycheck the minimum wage is like for example in ireland the minimum wage is 1600 euros and if you're to convert the turkish minimum wage to yeah. euros it's about 400 euros but then you're still pay paying the same price for a coffee in starbucks yes. <laughs> like it's the same you know, <laughs> it's same, yeah. it makes no sense and for us <laughs> yeah and and and like what i've been hearing from most turkish people i meet here is that Turkey is a great place to visit, but a terrible place to be, like, born in yeah. because, like, there's issues with the passport, there's issues with the currency, yeah, yeah. and so it's really difficult you're lucky to get to out. You're Irish. Yeah, <laughs> your money works, something. And yeah, uh, you can meet this place. You, you, you can you visit can come this place and, you and can go. You know, because Turkey is nice. I think people are nice here in Turkey. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know what you think about that, but most of the Tur I've been hitchhiked through Turkey. You know, most of the most many times, and n nearly all of the people I met were great people. They were just so helpful, always uh, looking out for you. Mm -hmm. And the you know weather is perfect. The seaside, seashore. I think maybe it's maybe too hot for you <laughs> too hot for me well, i think it's too hot for all of us like i mean four, 40 degrees is too hot chuck my black 40 degrees is too hot it's too hot for anybody <clears throat> but not if you have a river to jump into dive into yeah yeah but i'd just rather if i could do that without clothes on but <laughs> yeah yes ne dedi ne dedi ne dedi değil de mesela yoga ile ilgileniyor ve hani e, doğu mistisizmi ile de yakından bir şey içinde bu e, batının hani nasıl diyebiliriz ona sezgisel akıl ve hani rasyonel akıl, rasyonel akıl arasında işte e, insanoğlunun rasyonel akılı hani her şeyin ötesine koyup sezgisel akılı daha geri plana e, atıyor mu? Sadece bu şey değil. Hindistan ya da hani şey değil. Japonlar da mesela e, yatay düşünme e, şekli olarak falan hani düşündüğümüz zaman mesela bu bana şey geliyor. Ya yani bunun mesela e, tabi tarihsel olarak bir şeyi vardır ama nasıl mesela bu kadar kopabilmiş düşünceler? sistematik olarak ee, so you're mm -hmm. interested in yoga mm -hmm. in spiritualism mysticism ha, yeah. uh, which all are kind of eastern uh, subjects eastern concepts ne demiştin başka bunlarla ilgileniyor ha sezgisel akıllar rasyonel akıllar so there's this thing uh, the difference between those two parts of the world one uh, is R rational one is the rational mind and one is the intuitive mind mm. 
mm-hmm. intuition is more about intuition. Mm. I, you know, which one is why, <laughs> which uh, intuitive is Eastern and rational is Western. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and when you look at it, that rational mind uh, really made a whole lot of damage to the world in terms of, you know, the uh, what happened in continent of America over the years mm. with the, you know, all Europeans going there, Australia and all other mm-hmm. uh, because the, this rational mind uh, redux, reductionist mind uh, just makes the money bottom line and when this happens there's no uh, problem destroying the planet or destroying the even if it keeps making profit uh, so you're a guy who are into yoga and you know spirituality and uh, is asking those concepts rational mind and the intuitive mind uh, do you see those like as separate things or I think we require both but the the Western approach has favored the rational mind in an attempt to like, to find safety because the idea of separation is so prevalent in that like I am different to you and you're potentially dangerous to me so I need to have my house with mm. my things and my money hmm. yeah so there's like a lack of trust but beyond that even there's like the concept that we could all that you that each person could actually just be um, a kind person like that concept doesn't exist because we're raised told that there's bad people and there's good people but even like bad people quote unquote they're not necessarily aware that what they're doing is harming other people rather they're they're trying to find themselves just as we all are but they're on a sort of skewed path for whatever reason and so I think the reason like the rational mind dominates so much is because people are just feel so separate and they feel so scared so they're looking to satiate that need for safety with material mm-hmm. by material means and it has the uh, dominating thing inside it but intuitive mind doesn't have that but rational mind yeah. has this thing called uh, potency not potency the, where you become top of the hierarchy what does that like it has patri- this patri- pat- patriarchy it, it has yeah, this yeah, patri- it, yeah it has this concept so it ha- has yeah. ruling other people yeah it's it basically so. about like I'm different to you so if I'm good then you if I'm I can be better than you basically that's the idea is like that there is someone that's better than another person but really we're all we're all the same fundamentally it's like Einstein said uh, everyone is genius but if you if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree and I don't know the rest of it but exactly. you get it yeah <laughs> But, but the the crazy thing though about like being being a westerner and having the western mind is like you go then to the east and you see people living the way they live and for me as a westerner who's been programmed to make money and to be successful and to have you know a wife and family and a big house and stuff and provide for people like it's hard like there's so much resistance to like seeing people that live just a very simple life where their needs are met mm-hmm. and they have community and they have you know loving connection and they don't have like a big car or a big bank yeah. account but they have like what we need fundamentally as humans yeah, and so it's like that program is like so ingrained in me like yeah you also talked about that uh, back in, back in Ireland we have more money than you know, here in Turkey, but 
that doesn't necessarily mean we are more happy than happier than yeah. the people in Turkey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, like happiness is not uh, wealth in accordance with the wealth. No, not at all. Like, I've had, I've never been like super rich or anything, but I've had enough to, you know, like when I was in Canada and I was like working quite a bit, like I had plenty to pay my rent, plenty for food, I could eat out a few times a day and it was no problem or anything, but like I was just eating out to distract from the misery <laughs> that I was feeling. Yeah. Like I wasn't, because y- you get to a point where like all the things you thought you wanted, you have them, like in terms of like maybe money and like a house and whatever. And then you still, I, in my experience, I still felt this void that was kind of I felt like that I need I needed and wanted to be doing more creative things like more music things and like getting more involved in these projects but while I was working like it, I was working a job totally unrelated to any of these things like it wasn't creative at all and but I think you can find uh, those type of communities in the west too yeah they, yeah and are yeah and like shortly after i did i went to like uh at a yoga center i was in a community there for four months and there there it was a simple very simple life you know we were farming our own things eating wow. nice healthy food it was in canada yeah canada. yeah and but then there the issue so like there i realized like i don't really need a metropolitan city because before that I thought I, I love skyscrapers I love hustle and bustle <laughs> but then at the yoga center I was like wow this is really nice and peaceful and chill and like there's nature and you know we practice together and do things together and like there's a nice community spirit but then the westerner program inside me was like you have to make money you have to <laughs> you have to do things so it's like a constant like balance it's always nagging it yeah exactly and like that's the same like right now with like i i'm coming to an end of a travel but all the while while i'm traveling i feel like do stuff do stuff like you know make make money or do some sort of businessy thing or like make videos or edit videos or like share something on social media or like write songs or whatever and it takes away from the actual act of just traveling and like you know being open to the new possibilities like when i went to kavak which is where i met you guys i almost wasn't going to go there because i was by myself and i had a friend in a city nearby and i knew i could probably go and crash there and set up my computer and like try and do some stuff but then i was like that's just like a really safe bet. I know exactly what's going to happen if I do that yeah. pretty much. Let's But if, see what Kavak brings. Yeah, and so <laughs> I go to Kavak and which is this tiny little beach village type thing. And I'm sitting there on the beach and there's like groups of people here and there and I'm just by myself. I'm like, "Okay, well I could sit here and be by myself all night or I can go up to one of these groups of people and say, "Hey, at which I did and then I ended up making some nice connections and um, so like it takes a bit of courage but you know it's a pretty amazing payoff like for example before Kavak I had no connections in Istanbul and now all of you yeah, guys are yeah, here welcoming yeah. me and well, it's Amar amazing. Amar talked about this actually uh, days ago he said uh, backpacking back, being a backpacker is a thing where you find your like-minded people while you're on the road it's mm-hmm. so easier because you, it's like you're all on the same level you're all out there in the world mm-hmm. and you have your stuff on your you carrying them on your back and uh, it's just makes you easy because there are no boundaries like here in the city you're all out there and you start communicating and supporting each other so that's what happened when we went to Yeshilwari mm-hmm. it's like a little community there yeah. it worked so well until yeah, we yeah. ended and like 
if I run out of food, it's no problem. Like, I ran out of food after, like, four days in Kavak, and I stayed there for two weeks because there we just kept bumping into people that had some food to offer. And then, you know, when we went back to town, we all, like, replenished, and you give back, and then you get, you know, you just keep giving, and it keeps returning. So long as you're, I suppose, like, somewhat aligned to receiving... Um, I think if you're just giving, giving, giving without any boundaries and without any, like, if you're not receiving and you're just giving all of the time, then you're going to potentially burn yourself out. And, like, that goes with material things, because it's all energetic, right? So be it your time and your physical energy or be it your money energy or... Eggplants or health, <laughs> anything. <laughs> I want to ask you something about the language, since uh, you know you can communicate with Omar in the language. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> you do can communicate with him, right? You talked about this. Yeah. How your like, relationship with him? I I would love to be able to speak more with words to Omar, but despite the fact that we can't communicate, like through a common language like verbally mm, yeah. there's a very tight connection that we have like it's more of a heart connection yeah yeah yeah yeah yeah yeah yeah so there's mm-hmm. something uh, more powerful than language, I guess. I, it's mm-hmm. what you call, some people say it's energy, but you know, mm-hmm. I never experienced it, but being on the uh, foreigner country, you know, sitting around people who speak different languages, there must be some uh, bizarre experience. You feel the energy, you feel the vibe, uh, even though because I think Michael said this, uh, this this is you know there's something more powerful than the language you feel the vibe and that's what makes you keep keep you uh, there you mm-hmm. know you uh, keep being there even though it's not like your hometown you just yeah uh, it's so easy to communicate with words but uh, still uh, you can you in that place yeah like <clears throat> I think your hometown is like only really your home and sort of like a f- like physically that's where you're born raised and that's where the people that you spend most of your life with are but what you're experiencing there is just an experience and experiences are I would say feeling based and a feeling isn't tied to any physical place so you can have one feeling here and you can take that feeling elsewhere that's like the idea that if you're really in tune and connected with yourself uh, you can it doesn't matter where you are you can be here there you can be anywhere and you can still feel totally joyful and content and like that's the message of you know many of these enlightened beings is that if you can befriend yourself and be okay with yourself then it doesn't matter who's around you who's like annoying you or whatever because first and foremost you're with yourself and yeah then that will always be with yourself yeah and and there's no escape from that exactly and it's not to say that you just go be by yourself forever and you don't need anybody. Like, we're a social species, so it's still important that we have this connection. But yeah. if you're really in tune with yourself, then you're going to have much more nourishing and authentic and healthy relationships with the surroundings and the people around you. So, like, rather than projecting your anger and whatnot onto other people, you're you're able to recognize like with awareness from outside of the situation like what's going on yeah. and like 
bring compassion into I've it. seen this great sentence uh, some months ago and still on my mind. Uh, it was saying, uh, when you learn, when you realize that people's behaviors are all about their inner struggles, inner experiences. Mm -hmm. It's I mean, it's not about you, even if uh, even if it's a dual thing. Yeah. Then you learn uh, kindness mm -hmm. because uh, we're all in this together. We're all in this cosmic joke. Uh, yeah. The mystery. <laughs> no one knows what's going on, and yeah, everyone has their inner struggles. Bir de şey David Kesar'ın şey dedi Deepak Chopra'yı biliyor musun? Hı hı. Bu meditasyon evet, şeyleri Evet İrem takılıyor ona Guruları evet ben de çok seviyorum ama David mesela onu da seviyormuş Deepak Chopra'yı mı seviyor? Deepak Chopra Manhattan'da yaşıyormuş evet. New York Manhattan'ın da baya Which floor was he living in? I don't know I think maybe penthouse but I bir gökdelenin en üst katında <gülüyor> bayağı o şehrin yani New York'ta yaşıyor. Mekke'nin yani. şey diyordu ya guruların kendine düzgün bir iş bulması gerekiyor evet, diye. Tamam. Yani şey tamam okey bir vecita halini yakalaman için daha uygun bir ortam. Mesela Tibet'in dağlarındaki manastır ama Menat'ın ortasında bunu başarabiliyor musun? En kritik noktada o sanırım. Yani, yani kart sol, <gülüyor> Deepak Chopra hani bu bu tartışılır işte o şolar falan hani bu adamlar sonuçta yaşadığın alan işte bir Amerika ise mesela Amerika'nın Amerikan şeyi oluyorsun ister istemez yani onun sisteminde hani bir Tibet'teki e, tamamen kendini her şeyden soyutlamış bir ee, keşiş değilsin ama belki de şey olan budur yani hem o her iki tarafı yani hem içindeki aydınlığı yakalamaya çalışıp hem de normal hayatın e, seni sürüklemesine izin vermeyi hani kirlen, en az kirlenmeyle ya da o kirliliği bir şekilde kendin e, temizleyip aydınlığa <gülüyor> Yeah, it's like what you said about uh, in that book, Quiet Mind. Uh, Krishna Murti was saying that guy. I mean, the guy was asking, uh, "How do you live? How do you make money?" Mm -hmm. And what what was his answer? He was saying, "Well, his he doesn't need anything other than, in his words, a few calories a day and somewhere to sleep and." Every, like everything he does is very much just moment to moment. Like he's not trying to do anything in particular, and as a result of this, there's so little resistance, and so things just come to him. And like that's you know another sort of an idea which I've found to be true for me as well. When you don't need anything, it just comes to you like. If you don't need money, for example, if you just decide that what you have is enough and you don't want any more, you don't need any more, it just ironically it just you get you end up getting more and you're like, oh, what do I do with this? Or like if you're really content on your own, you don't have a relationship, you don't have a lover, you just really like, wow, I'm so grateful for like the friends that I have, or the sun, or the trees, or this cup of coffee, <laughs> and then you're not even looking for a girl or a boyfriend or whatever, and then they just arrive and you're like oh hello <laughs> and and and then you're just like oh i guess like i mean i don't i'm not looking for this in particular but it feels like a good thing to experience right now so i'll give it a go and if it works out it works out if it doesn't it doesn't because you're still yourself you're still with yourself and you're still you know aware of the things in your life that are amazing that you're grateful for so it's like you know again it comes back to what we talked about at the beginning just choosing your reality it's like because we we always do have something to be grateful for even in the worst situation there's something there's something always to be appreciative of even if, like if you're breathe, if you're alive and breathing that's one thing right there and so if you're perhaps, not alive and breathing then you're dead so so perhaps <laughs> not forcing is the best thing yes. 
the senses came up <laughs> and then yeah because if you're forcing it it's like well it's, <coughs> it's uh, it probably isn't supposed to happen if we're to David you know. şey sorar mısın uh, İrlanda'da hani şey olarak din politikası nasıl yani Hı- Hristiyan bir toplum değil mi bir uh, mesela yüzde kaçı Hristiyan do you know the statistics in Ireland what's the religion like that in they're Christian Catholics yeah Catholic. Catholic. they're Catholics yeah. mesela how, how many persons of them are do you think uh, like practicing practicing religion uh, I don't know numbers hmm. but I would say like over the last decade it's really significantly decreased hmm. um, son 10 yılda iy- iyice düştü yani. yes Merak ettiğim şey şu aslında, şimdi yani David de biliyordur aslında Hristiyanlık, Yahudilik, Müslümanlık gibi dinlerin çıktığı topraklar buralar ve Sümerlerden Babil, Babilonlara dayanan bir hikaye o ve aslında Türkler de şeyinde özünde paganlar, şamanlardı ve daha sonra işte toplumlar değişti. Ayrış yani e, İrlandalılar da özünde aslında şey paganlardı. Yani Avrupa'nın geneli. Sonra Hristiyanlıkla birlikte hatta bizim konuştuğumuz hep güldüğümüz bir hikaye var yani e, paganlar işte çıplak dolanıp şey yapıyorlar falan dans ederek e, şey şeyleri, yapıyorlar. Hristiyan, var, ritüeller var. var. Uh, the thing he wonders is that uh, Hala şey hani paganik şeyler devam ediyor mu? O hikayeyi de anlat Kara Çarşaf. You know all these uh, one uh, god religions emerge from these lands. You know the Anatolia, the Israel, the, these lands. Mm-hmm. And uh, back from that, for for instance, Turks, Turks too. Turks were pagans uh, for most of their history, and then somehow they chose islam uh, it's like that in uh, it's it's like, like that in most communities most countries actually they were pagans to irish people mm. uh, uh, but then they chose christianity uh, so he's, he's saying basically th- there's this story uh, i think it was around here at shore There was a two base, and there was a ritualistic uh, thing they do every year. Those community, they were hopping on a ship, and everyone was naked, and they just goes to the other shore, be dancing naked on that ship. That was the ritual of that community. But then they accepted Christianity. You know, Christianity came over there, and this that ritual. Uh, didn't stop it continued but this time it was like they were all in blacks wearing black things and it was this uh, church chantings like the nasıl deniyor ilahi you know those church chantings what are the, those called Hymn, Song. hymns uh, yeah hymns, hymns, hymns, songs, hymns. Yeah. and it just switched to that yeah. being naked and music and Mesela biz hala Müslüman bir top hani genel olarak Müslüman bir toplum olmamıza rağmen hala e, paganik şeyler yeah. de, farkında olmadan devam edildi. Like, bir karışmıştır you know, Müslümanla. Uh, Arabs Tanrı'nın Turks, öğretisiymiş gibi. Uh, Islam is not the same. There, there are some uh, rituals the Turks still do even though they're saying they're Muslim there is in Islam. Mm. They're still doing those pagan rituals yeah. uh, back then. The Arabs do not do them. It differs from all the other, uh, you know, uh, countries. Onlarda da var mı böyle hala şey yapılan paganik? Yeah. Do şey. Do you have still some paganic rit- rituals in your country that's still going on? To the best of my knowledge, no. Like there's. All I ever experienced from growing up was like up until I was 12 years old. Every Sunday morning, we would have to go to mass. My parents would take us to mass, so church. And 
I resented every bit of it. It didn't, none of it made any sense to me. I don't think it made any sense to the people that were teaching it to me either. And I guess that's why eventually So why they do you stopped. think they keep doing that? Because they their parents did it. Like it was very strong and in I my... And this too, there's this, uh, religion makes it, uh, you know, common language. It makes a community too easier to communicate with themselves, to support each other. Yeah. So that's why they keep doing it, even though in their inner uh, parts they don't believe in it, you know, strongly. Yeah. But they keep doing it because of the sake of the community, to a common language. And I just, like it's another coping mechanism, like... You know, if you if you do if you go to mass, then you're gonna be hmm. saved by whoever you believe is gonna save you. And it's you know it's comparable to like it, you know it's fear based. I would say, like that's what any like religion is. It's like it's, it's separation again. It comes back to like the ego and separation and I'm different from you, you're going somewhere, I'm going somewhere else, which is better than where you're going. But really, like, the, the way I see it, like, if we're looking at heaven and hell, like, heaven is being at peace with yourself in this moment, hell is not being at peace. So hell is resistant, heaven is alignment and harmony. Hmm. <coughs> and people don't recognize that it's possible for you to experience alignment and harmony right now you don't have to do anything you just have to ironically do nothing like just let be live and let be because if you're like trying to change and achieve this or that then you're saying that right now isn't it's not good enough but really there's a way to move from like you're here and you're great and you can be over there and you can also be great but you don't need to go there to be great so you can be great everywhere <laughs> like uh, you, you're always with yourself so yeah it's like wherever you go that's where you are and wherever you go you take your heart with you exactly um, there's a wow shoulder there's a praying um, mantis on your shoulder hmm. wow you big ne bu Çekil Do you want me to your peygamber de peygamber de what was that called in English? Proput. I don't know, maybe Proput. a praying mantis. <laughs> mantis, yes. It's mantis. a praying mantis. Wow. Okay, guys, I'm going to make subtitles for this talk, too, so it's best not to keep it too long. Okay. <laughs> How long are we on now? Thank you for... Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's 47 Boxing minutes. Jesus, that was long. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, cool. Well, okay. <laughs> Great we'll to pray with the mantis yes. for... <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thanks for this conversation. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you. Yes.